Hi guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. We're continuing our intermediate series by today discussing this awesome species called a false water cobra, or FWC, or falsi, also known as the Brazilian false cobra or the Brazilian smooth snake on account of the absence of any keels on its dorsal scales. So this, this snake it belongs to a family called Hydrodynastes. Um, that is part of a subfamily called Xenodontidae. Xenodontidae includes Heterodon, which is the hognose snakes, Ferrancia, which is the mud snakes, and Lystrophis, which is the tricolored hogs. Uh, these are all rear fang species. This guy's got uh, the voinis gland, enlarged rear teeth, uh, and he would chew, and the saliva will run down into the cuts made by these enlarged teeth. And that's how it would immobilize prey. The reason that they're intermediate species is because of this. Some people are hypersensitive to the bite, others aren't. I've been bit by a, a falsy and nothing really to report. Maybe I bled a bit more than normal. Uh, and my hand was maybe a little bit sore, but nothing serious. If handled regularly, they become completely tame. Um, in fact, so tame that like this girl, she doesn't even hood anymore. Um, Obviously, they get the name Cobra because of the ability as a defense mechanism to hood out their neck and flatten it. Makes them look a bit more big and impressive, scare off any potential predators. There are two other species described within Hydrodynasties. There's Bicinctus, which is Herman's false cobra, or there's Milana gigas, which seems to be a black form of this. Uh, neither of which you will find within the hobby, um, but I'm just merely mentioning it out of interest. So, Hydrodynasties gigas. We've got a bit of sexual size difference. Your boys are going to be between 5 and 6 feet long. Your girls are going to be between 6 and 7 feet long. I have seen sizes quoted up to 9 feet, but I still see one in the flesh. There's people that claim it, but haven't necessarily got the proof. But 7 feet would be about average for a girl. They can have cannibalistic tendencies, so don't keep them together. Uh, only introduced in temporary liquid breathing and absolutely keep, keep babies separated. Uh, they originate from Bolivia, Brazil and Paraguay. They're marshland snakes, typically in rainforests, where uh, it's uh, nice and humid for them. Although that does raise a bit of a disparity when it comes to their captive care. And this is the same for a lot of the snakes that we consider to be water snakes. Um, they have a nasty tendency to blister if kept in muggy humid and wet environments. So much better to keep them in a relatively dry tank with a large water container to soak in and a localised moss box if they want to retire in there to shed their skin. Uh, they really won't thank you for it and their skin condition will not improve if they're kept in a permanently damp and muggy tank. It won't help at all. They're ready feeders. In fact, their metabolism is lightning fast. Keeping them full is a challenge. They, you know, babies are wanting to eat every four or five days, uh, and you know, every probably six to seven days for an adult. They will take mice and rats. They'll also take fish. Naturally, they would take frogs and frogs and toads as well. Um, I just think they're absolutely fabulous snakes. If uh, you find that the babies go off their food, you can maybe try scenting it up with a bit of salmon. Their their fuzzies that they're going on to. The babies are large, they're going to start off on fuzzies. I mean, you know, you're seeing some really good sized babies here. Uh, it's quite amazing, actually. As babies, their faces look incredibly like the genus Nerodia, which are the North American water snakes. This leaves as they get larger, but as babies, you can really see it, you know. Uh, and the parallels, obviously, with their care are uh, obvious as well. So, these guys are intolerant of high temperatures. They don't really want to be kept anything above 28 degrees Celsius. Cool length can drop to about 23, 24 degrees. Uh, you cool them down over winter to cycle them for breeding. Um, daytime temps aren't so much of an issue, but I've heard that lowering the uh, nighttime temperature is incredibly helpful when it comes to uh, breeding trials and trying to get them going. The egg layers, we incubate the eggs at 28 degrees. They'll have between 10 to 15 eggs in a litter. Um, there's a sexual size difference and some people also note that the males have got a different coloured ventral scales or belly scales to the female. But I wouldn't necessarily use that as a reliable uh, form of uh, uh, informing you what sex you've actually produced. Uh, they're absolutely fantastic.
fantastic. Um, they are mixed in their temperament, hence why we put them along with the fact that they're rear fanged into the intermediate series. Um, you can end up with snakes like this, which are as good as gold, will let you do anything with them, absolutely soft as a brush. And then you're going to get some that are a bit shirty and don't like being disturbed. It's kind of the look of the draw, but those are the breaks. We're keeping intermediate stuff now. Not everything's always going to be a super tame. Definitely worth looking at. Look up the genus Hydrodynastes gigas. Um, gigas obviously meaning large. Uh, and yeah, you can't really go far wrong. If you're looking for a little bit of a challenge, you've kept a couple of snakes already. You fancy something a little bit different. They're just absolutely ace. Really, really lovely snakes. When they hood, it's very impressive. But obviously, as they tame up, as they get bigger, they're less likely to do this. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, keep watching. We'll be doing some more on the Intermediate Series in the coming weeks. Visit the website, which is www.snakesandadders.co.uk, to see what we're all about. Cheers.